What you just witnessed is the Sternenherz Looper, the world's first looper for Bitwig's clip launcher. For far too long, Bitwig had no looper and no way to record audio overdubs in the launcher. So it is with great pleasure that I can share some game-changing news with you. Bitwig has a looper now, not because it was introduced by some current upgrade, but because I decided to build one. It is running in an external controller software called TouchOSC, which can be used on your phone, tablet or desktop, even on the same machine as Bitwig. It loops and records audio overdubs directly in Bitwig's clip launcher. In this video, I will show you how this looper came to be, how it works and how you can get it. If you just want to see the looper, then I recommend you skip the following chapter. One and a half years ago, I considered switching from Ableton to Bitwig. After using the trial version, I wrote to Bitwig, where's the looper and how do I make audio overdubs? The answer was very clear. There is no looper in Bitwig and audio overdub is not possible. Now, those were some really disappointing news. Because my main impression about Bitwig was that it is the successor to Ableton and therefore I expected an even better solution for looping than Ableton's crappy plugin. So to me that was astounding and also a bit demotivating. I almost thought about having to say goodbye to Bitwig because the workflow I love most is all about live jamming first and then going over to the arrangement. So what to do? All I could do, so I thought, is make a feature request and a video about it to share with you and Bitwig. Simply because I see so much potential in this DAW and already fell in love with many of its functions, like the horizontal clip launcher, which makes the visual transition from launcher to timeline so much better than in Ableton. By the way, even Ableton 12 doesn't have that view. However, Ableton has Max for Life which, unlike Bitwig's grid, gives much more access to Ableton's API. Based on my favorite Max for Life plugin of all time, the One Button Looper by AbletonDrummer.com, I had the idea to ask Bitwig to please implement what this awesome device and another a bit uglier device called MM Clip Looper does natively, which is recording audio overdubs directly into the clip launcher. That is a workflow I prefer over a looper plugin, which doesn't give access to its individual layers or interrupts the flow when trying to get the audio into the clip launcher. After creating that feature request video, I laid out the request in a very detailed written version, sent it to Bitwig and posted it on the community website Bitwish, where it since gained 40 upvotes. To see that I'm not alone in my appreciation of loop stations and their awesome workflow, I actually feel quite hopeful about Bitwig's future. After all, it usually takes a critical mass of people to ask for certain features to actually become reality. And there are quite a few features which would be essential for improved live looping in Bitwig. Like automatic fades for clip recordings. To find out what I mean, just sing a note and hold it, then press record in a clip slot in Bitwig. The beginning of the clip recording will have a clearly audible click noise, which is absolutely unacceptable. Doing the same in Ableton will result in a clean and smooth clip, thanks to the automatic fade. Yes, Bitwig has an automatic fade setting in its preferences, but sadly it doesn't count for recordings, just for edits. Another workflow killer is that Bitwig disables undo and redo while recording into the arranger or MIDI overdub is active. 
Now, this probably doesn't affect the majority of Bitwix users, but all live musicians who want to use Bitwix undo and redo workflow while recording their live performance. Likewise game-breaking for them is the fact that the clip launcher swallows recordings of audio and notes. As long as you're recording into a clip, that clip recording is not recorded into the arranger despite record in arranger being active. I really hope Bitwig will fix those unexpected behaviors, especially since they are working flawlessly in Ableton. Also, it would be awesome if Bitwig gave us access to clip playback progress via the API. Just think of the Ableton push, which shows clip playback progress within each clip in the display. Something like that is impossible right now for Bitwig. Other impossibilities are having a shortcut for the looping setting of clips, better automatic BPM detection and warping of big audio files, and the ability to set the project tempo with the first recorded clip. Now the last feature request I'll mention also explains why I didn't just build a looper in the grid. Actually, as my very first grid device, I wanted to build an audio looper. With the grid being a highly praised, omnipotent tool, I was sure that this should be possible in a smooth and easy way. Wrong. The audio recorder of the grid records six seconds only. <laughs> and it doesn't even have any additional functions beyond simple playback. And the sampler can't be fed with live audio. So the grid desperately needs better audio recording abilities for live performance. The best thing would be to let users record live audio directly into the sampler while also adding better automatic slicing to it. At first those unexpected inabilities of the grid led to great disappointment. But thankfully, they also sparked my creativity to think outside of the grid. That was the moment my looper was born. Not giving up on my feature wish for Bitwig and thinking outside of the grid. Since the driving force behind the existence of my looper was nothing else but a feature wish for improving musical expression in a certain way, you can tell that I'm thinking quite highly about feature requests in general. That's why, before I show you the looper, I want to share some thoughts about feature requests and musical expression in general. Because after reading the forums of Ableton, Steinberg and Bitwig for several years, I have encountered a lot of black and white thinking that I will try to reconcile. On the one hand, there are people who share their frustrations about missing features and they can appear quite unhappy. On the other hand, there are people who complain about those people who complain, while stating the obvious. Outside things should not be required to make us happy and we can already produce music with every door in a wonderful way. In my opinion, the truth lies in between. While it is very important to remember that happiness comes from within and we don't need a door or even a full set of guitar strings to make music, it is absolutely legitimate to ask for a full set of strings if we have the desire to play a song with a little bit more notes and harmonies. Complaining about a missing feature does not necessarily mean that the person who complains is imprisoned in a wrong mindset of thinking that unless that feature exists, one cannot be happy or make music. It usually just means that the person knows from experience or artistic vision how well this feature fits in his or her personal workflow and how it can lead to a more efficient way of musical expression. For example, every live musician who knows the flow state you can achieve with a quick way of audio overdubbing will agree that a loop station is a much better tool to express yourself freely in the moment than having to stop, switch the track, maybe even go to the project panel to adjust the fixed clip length and then continue recording. When it comes to tools in software for music, it's all about whether they enable us to express ourselves efficiently or not. In my opinion, music is a musical expression of us, of our soul, and mysteriously even more than us. Life itself, or the universe, 
as individual expression. So it's absolutely legit to ask for the best possible way to make this wonderful expression a reality for everyone. Of course, this strive for technical perfection has to be met with great caution. Many musicians, including me, have a lesser or stronger form of the gear acquisition syndrome, which has its roots in the fundamental programming of our minds that certain conditions have to be met before everything is complete and we can finally be happy with how things are. So you see, this goes far beyond the topic of feature requests for music software. This is a fundamental human issue, which is wonderfully examined by Eckhart Tolle, who says, Acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. Now, with that mindset, I looked at what Bitwig can already do and what a controller software called Touch OSC can already do with its scripting and I suddenly realized, I can do this! I can build a looper. And I have to do it myself, because obviously no one else is doing it. So, here we are. This is the Sternenherz looper. The first looper for Bitwig's clip launcher. If we start up Touch OSC with my template and Bitwig with its driven by Moss OSC script, type in the correct IP addresses and ports, because Open Sound Control communicates over the network, we can finally do what many of us wanted to do for a long time. By using just one button, we can loop, which means recording audio overdubs. The special thing is, Unlike with Ableton's looper or most loop stations, those audio overdubs are not destructively mixed into each other, but stay visible and accessible one by one, because they are nothing else but automatic clip recordings within the launcher. So within Bitwig, the Sternenherz looper simply is a group of six audio tracks. Five looper tracks for the overdubs and one monitoring track. This additional monitoring track is necessary because for the automatic overdub to work properly, every track has to be armed all the time and to prevent the five looper tracks from outputting their monitoring signal all at once, monitoring is deactivated for them. So when live performing, you can always listen to yourself and the already recorded overdubs at the same time, which is already an upgrade compared to the normal behavior of tracks in Bitwig's Clip Launcher, where the playback of recorded clips will mute the monitoring signal and you could not immediately perform on top of recorded clips until switching the track. So this problem is solved by some simple routing. The main looper button not only gives visual feedback about the currently running beat count, but also about the recording status. When you record overdubs, they will show up as clip recordings in scene 1 of Bitwig and as little cute bubbles around the looper button. You even have control over their individual playback status, volume and up to 6 send effects per channel in this effects view panel, which also offers buttons to quickly reset all effects at once. At the right side, you see the main fader for the whole looper, which controls the group track volume and 6 faders for the send effects of the group. The special thing about all volume faders is, that I separated them into a big one, which goes up to minus 1 dB, and a very small one, which can be used to quickly go up to plus 6 dB. Of course, you can also control the playback of the whole looper group. I also included the ability to quickly save the current looper content by creating a new scene based on the currently running clips. This way, you could duplicate the current looper content to save it and then immediately record another set of overdubs from scratch. Up to three scenes are available to cycle through by pressing on the star-shaped button in the center. The number shown in this star represents the currently selected scene the looper records into. When the scene is filled with clips, they are also shown on the tips of the star, just for fun. In the remix view, you can freely choose which audio clip from which scene you want to play. So that's basically like a little mini launchpad. 
To understand how the looper works, we have to first take a look at the post-recording actions of Bitwig. Those settings are awesome for live performers who want to choose the length of clips before recording them. It's no wonder such functions are integrated in the Ableton Push or the Launchpad Pro to be accessed in an easy way. So, it's incredibly strange and illogical that Bitwig decided to hide those functions in the project panel and make them non-assignable, so nobody can use them via the MIDI mapping feature or even the keyboard. The same counts for launch quantization, by the way. Thank God for the Driven by Moss OSC script and Touch OSC, because with those we have a workaround for remote controlling those essential functions. Not only via touch control, but if we wanted to, we could also MIDI assign them to a controller. Because in Touch OSC, every button or fader can be assigned to several MIDI or OSC messages at the same time. So Touch OSC could receive a MIDI message from a launchpad and then transmit the according OSC message to Bitwig. The numbers on those touch buttons obviously represent bar length to choose from. When you press on and the number one, your next recordings will have a fixed clip length of one bar. Because the on button stands for the post-recording action play recorded. So Bitwig will play back the recorded clip after it reaches the selected bar length. Now as you can see, the second I activate this fixed clip length recording, the main looper button turns green to show the currently active recording mode of the looper. I created three different modes two manual modes and one automatic mode. To switch between manual and automatic, press the third star. Which of the two manual modes is active is decided by deactivating or activating the fixed clip length recording. The first manual mode is the green colored fixed clip length recording, where the bar length of audio overdubs is predetermined by the currently selected number. The main looper button has to be pressed just once and it will start and automatically end an audio overdub. The second manual mode is the white colored free length recording where the length of your audio overdubs is not restricted. You have to press the main button to start the recording and press again to end the recording. The third mode is fully automatic and it is colored orange to honor the orange color of overdubs in the RC505. This mode requires the fixed clip length to be activated with a specific bar length. You only have to press the looper button one time to automatically record up to five audio overdubs, one after the other. Just make sure to wait for the second half of the currently running bar before starting automatic overdub. With these three looper modes, I have done my best to recreate the best possible looper experience with the currently available API functions of Bitwig. As you heard earlier, Bitwig could do us a big favor and improve the available API functions and fix some of the live looping issues in general. But let's focus on the awesome things we already can do now with a little step-by-step -step demonstration. After getting Touch OSC for Android or iOS for about $12, the desktop version is free by the way, just with a little reminder screen on startup to buy a $24 license, the first thing to do is transferring my looper template onto the mobile device. To do this, I first open up the desktop version of Touch OSC, load my file, enable Wi-Fi or USB connection, enable the editor network by clicking this button here, and click the connect button on my phone. The looper will then immediately appear on the display and I can disconnect from the editor network and save the looper template. Now to establish the connection between Bitwig and my Android device via Wi-Fi, I first find out its IP, then I add the open sound control script by driven by Moss to Bitwig's controllers and type in the IP. Then I select the correct IP of the PC in the connection settings of the mobile Touch OSC app. Just to let you know, the correct IP sometimes only appears as a selectable item after the editor network was established once. Also make sure you have the correct ports typed in. Connection via USB cable is also possible but requires USB debugging to be activated and could also require active USB tethering in some cases. 
Concerning any Mac or iOS devices, I have no clue. But there is a really friendly community for TouchOSC users on Discord and Facebook. Not to forget the support email of TouchOSC. Another great resource is Tim Corpus, who is probably the best YouTuber for TouchOSC. So make sure you check out his tutorials. Before I start looping for the first time, I usually press the refresh button in my looper to make sure that it is properly connected and updated with the correct visual feedback of all current Bitwig settings. I have three input tracks which are all rooted into the tracks of my looper. I will explain the overall project setup later. To get things started, I press the big delete button. This not only deletes any existing recordings from the looper, but also starts Bitwig's playback and activates the record arm for all looper tracks. When all tracks are armed and ready to go, the left star turns green. So before using the looper, always make sure that the left star is not off and grey and if it is, just press it. Now that Bitwig's playback is already running, we can activate the metronome and adjust the tempo by tapping it in or changing the value directly. By the way, I've built in a little extra script, which automatically rounds the tapped-in tempo, so there won't ever be any decimal places, only round numbers. As looper mode, I'll choose the fixed clip length recording, because I already know I'm gonna record some 1-bar and 2-bar loops. <laughs> Bitwig has a looper now Overdubbing launcher wow Record layer let it grow Enter the new music flow Now the good thing is, if you don't like a song, you just press the delete button again.
Now, as you have seen, it's also possible to record VST instruments as audio, thanks to the routing of my Bitwig project. To record MIDI instruments into the looper, I have a MIDI track which has complete control running in it, so I can choose any kind of instrument and when arming the track and muting my microphone, record it into my running looper. Another great way to manage this instrument track would be using Bitwig's instrument selector. My vocals are recorded via two different audio in tracks where my microphone is routed into. Both tracks contain many effects which I can control on my big custom-made touch controller and every track of the looper is listening to their output, so the effects can be recorded. As you can see, the first track is currently deactivated. That's my way of having a low latency mode. The track has effects on it, which are really awesome but introduce too much latency to the whole project, so I only activate it when needed. I really hope Bitwig will someday let us MIDI assign device activations. I'm not talking about the toggle on off button for each device, I mean the deactivation, which unloads them out of the memory and gets rid of their latency. This can't be MIDI mapped for each device, only for the currently selected item, which isn't helpful at all for handling a huge live set. Due to this basic input channel setup, my first looper has to be placed on tracks 4 up to 10. This means that if you want to use it, you have to make sure it sits on exactly those tracks. I created a funny little tool which helps setting this up. You could also do this by hand, but it's a cool way to show you the necessary steps to set up the looper. So when you're opening a new project, you go to the settings region of the looper and press the first button to create 7 new audio tracks. The second button does 4 actions at once. Make a selection of 6 tracks group them, change the monitoring to be off for all tracks except for the monitoring track and then arming all tracks. Then there's a button to quickly rename all tracks with one click and another button to recolor the tracks to my standard colors. The only problem is, for the second button to work properly, the little helping tool needs a little help from you. <laughs> you have to go to the controller settings of Bitwig and select two actions in the OSC script. For action 15, you choose the category selection and then extend selection range to next item. For action 12, you choose the category editing and then group. Thankfully, this only has to be done one time. If you are running Touch OSC on the same machine as Bitwig, you also have to know that for selection and grouping actions to work properly, Bitwig has to be in focus the right way. So make sure to select a track before using the help tool. Thankfully, the whole looping process with all of its functions seems to work just fine, even if Bitwig is running on the same machine and is out of focus or even in the background. I'm sure you have already noticed that my looper is not yet a complete loop station, but only roughly like one instance of a looper plugin. If we were to compare my looper with an RC505 loop station, we would currently only have the first loop button available. However, the comparison is absolutely difficult because the RC505 does not allow any control over the overdubs and the individual effect channels. And sometimes you use the RC505 in such a way that you only record two overdubs on the first two buttons and a single recording on the third button, which makes a total of five overdubs, which would also be possible with my looper. But of course, I don't intend to stick with just one looper. It's just not that easy to copy and paste it, because each and every track, scene, clip slot, volume, effects, recording and scripting action, has its unique number, which needs to be adjusted for every single page. Thankfully, the second looper instance is almost finished and the third will follow after that. I'm also thinking about redesigning the whole thing so that all faders and effects knobs are on the same level. This might look a little bit less beautiful, but will be much more functional. Since I had zero knowledge about touch OSC and coding before, it wasn't the easiest project for me, but I love doing it. So if you want to support me and get your hands on the looper in its current version, you can do so on my Patreon with this buy me a little cake membership. 
Or if you hate subscriptions too much, you could also donate the little cake amount via PayPal. Usually, I don't like so-called paywalls and I would love to share everything for free. But this is a thing where I put a lot of work and passion into it and I'm broke and I would love to have enough money to buy an Android tablet instead of this old phone here so I can optimize a looper version for tablet screens. I'm just a musician whose passion for controlling Bitwig led to unexpectedly awesome solutions that anyone who supports me as musician can enjoy with me together or suffer with me together if there's a bug. <laughs> it would be really awesome if you joined this journey of creating music and musical tools with me. Feel free to join my Discord server and be part of a charmingly tiny community of about two people right now. So come in if you have any questions and want to share feedback about the looper or any other stuff related to my videos. Until next time, keep on making music. Goodbye.